when when you were drinking and then were you ever did you ever find yourself drink drunk on the pitch then playing? Yeah, yeah, I def, def, most definitely. Really? Yeah, I, I've I've played. <laughs> I know for a fact I played against Alan Shearer um, drunk, and I played um, against Dur Duncan Ferguson drunk. <laughs> it was six foot four or something. I don't know what it, how it is. But um, but how, how were, you, were you drinking that morning, or the, was it from the night before? How? No, I, there, was, there was once I came back to play the Everton game. I'd, I'd been in Ireland and I flew over uh, back to play the Everton game, and uh, I, I think um, the, I think I don't know who the manager was, but I actually w was named in the squad and put in the pitch and stuff like that. But I used to just do the best I could. I used to sometimes beg, um, be it uh, Hugo Ehiog or, or Gareth Southgate, yeah. and especially Sean Teal, I must admit, I was giving him a mention because I used to say, lads, I was out last night like, and, and I'm not feeling the best. So, And they used to some, you know, they did a lot of covering for me, to be honest. Did you ever win man of the match after a game when you were drunk playing? I'm afraid I did. Um, Duncan Fer it's because Duncan Ferguson, I'd come back, as I said, from Ireland to yes. play against Everton. And I jumped up for the first uh, um, ball with him and I actually headed the ball. And I couldn't believe I headed the ball. But he actually turned to me and he, and he said it to the ref as well. He looked at the ref as well and he said, that's the last ball he'll win all night. And, and that night I was given man of the match. And even a friend of mine said, that, you know, that's impossible. How, how did that just happen? That... Duncan Ferguson, I'm sure, I don't think he spoke to me after no, the game. No, I'm not so. that surprised, I suppose. <laughs> when, you, when you ended up playing in the Irish jersey then for Jack Charlton and, and all those, those remarkable times for which people still see you as a hero, of course, um, how did Jack feel about any of that? Or was he policing you very carefully? Yeah, I think he, he took a much more serious view of it like, because he wanted me to, um, you know, to obviously stay away from yeah. drink and stuff like that. So he had... Um, you know, people sitting outside my door and... When? Uh, um, well, basically, when they, the other lads were allowed out for certain amount, for certain nights... Um, to go on the, on the tear? On the tear, yeah. I used to watch them actually out of the, you know, my bedroom window, like, and the big taxis coming up and all the lads would be going out with the tricky gear. And, <laughs> and you were looking out the window? And I w I'd be looking out the window with, obviously, tears streaming down the eyes, <laughs> you know, please. But they were... Um, and who was at your door at the hotel? But, um... Uh, 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 his second name was Quinn. I know a couple that. of lads. Yeah, yeah. Well, not usually. There was only one lad that was left outside. Like there, your but, own personal bouncer. But yeah, but a friend, a good friend, but not that good that he wouldn't just turn his head the other way for a second while I got out. But um, but Jack, Jack did did put in things, stringent things where yeah. where I wasn't allowed out. And and to be honest, I accepted it then because I wanted to be part of eighty eight, yeah. ninety, and ninety four. You know, I didn't want to just slip out. There's many times he could have just said, look, I've had enough of you, go, you know, disappear.